Oh, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Are we here? Did we change over? I think we did. Okay. <laughs> I'm live. Uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted and I didn't even do shit. I'm, actually, that's not true. I've been I've been doing tons of shit. Um, but I was not doing what Chris Fox, aka Fox Sounds, and the Dance Commander Disco have been doing for the past 90 minutes, which is, you know, getting your old Friday workout. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I love having Sit and Spin be part of the uh, the Booty Mashup Twitch programming. Um, oh my God, why are you not working? This light is supposed to be on here. Hold on. Um, oh, you guys. Uh, okay, stay on stay on there's a light down here there's a there's a ring light and it keeps popping off and um and i don't mean popping off like in a good way like the way a friday night dance party should pop off no it pops off like literally it turns off for no good reason whatsoever and i don't know why i've actually <laughs> okay everyone i gotta say my makeup looks pretty damn good considering this was done like six minutes ago uh like like that like i i forget that i'm so used to all of our shows being three minutes uh three minutes three hours three hours that when you know fox sounds has sit and spin for only 90 minutes it's like oh, okay a show just started i can get my live stream going i can eat some lunch i can like oh you know what i'm gonna like you know swap out the background i'm gonna do this thing and that thing and it was like oh shit <laughs> his show's over within 10 minutes and i don't even have my face on yet um <laughs> so lower the microphone okay lower it really is it too loud Oh, jeez. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, my God. Oh. It's been one of those days. It has been one of those days. And the, it, the, ba the day's barely started. I've had so many damn tech issues. It's like, why doesn't this shit just work why doesn't it just fucking work i have it all set up that set up that set up that, and then i turn it all on and then it just shit goes wrong and then i'm like oh well okay well this is going wrong well let me swap out this other thing and then it's just like a fucking downward spiral of nothing working so uh thank you dj time here i'm gonna like just I'm going to put my fucking reading glasses on just so it's easier so I can see what everyone's, everyone's. I'm sick of the fucking gremlins. I'm sick of the technology. I'm just fucking, fucking, fucking sick of this shit not working. And it doesn't help that I'm on like this ancient 2012 iMac where sometimes, like I had it all set up, you guys. Like I've been really enjoying using my iPhone as a, as a webcam um i mean it's like we did mash up kitchen in my kitchen cooking show on tuesday just kind of as a lark um i set up my iphone on a tripod in the kitchen and that was really fun um you know i've been doing uh i, I was in at my loft in la last week um i did i did a show again same deal you know we've been doing cribs like, this is the first weekly meeting where I'm not doing cribs uh, and showing you guys my house. So it's like, it, you know, I had it all plugged in. It worked fine. Then every, and, then it, and then it didn't work fine. So then I, like, got to put everything all back for this janky-ass iMac webcam. And, oh, I am, I am venting. I'm going to fucking vent. I'm going to vent. I'm going to scroll back, see if I missed anything. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, I, I even, I even tried to turn it off and turn it on again, which I've done several times. It's just, 
Uh, anyway, um, okay. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath, and the light's off again. Yes, I cannot get this um, this ring light to stay on. I don't know why. Probably because it's 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 cheap. I mean, this is this is what the ring light looks like. Um, you know, total. You know, it's Amazon ring light. It looks like any ring light, right? But um, it, I don't know. For some reason, it just decided that eh, maybe it'll stay on. Maybe it won't. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, somebody's noticing my crazy background here. Yes, we, we are going to go to... Um, we're gonna go to the rave. We we're we're gonna go to the rave later, you guys. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, we are at here. Let me let me sort of step out of the way just a little bit. We're at the mall. We're at the mall, everybody. This this is the mall. Um, there's the rave store right th right there. So um, we're gonna go. We're gonna go shop for some clothes. Uh, spoiler alert: They don't actually sell rave clothes at rave. Do you know why? Because rave existed before raves did. This sh th th this photograph. Um, God, Foot Locker. They have not changed their logo in years. Uh, is that K's? K's Jewelry? Uh, what else is in here? Um, Tiffany. Tiffany played right here in the 80s, in like 1980. I want to say 1986, Tiffany was on that stage. I was in a fashion show on this stage. I worked at the information desk at this mall right the information desk is right over there like actually actually there information desk is right there because it looked out this is like the center of randall park mall uh which take a good look everyone it doesn't exist in fact if you google randall park mall for the most part you will see um you're gonna see abandoned it's like it's like eerie, amazing, lovely photographs. There it goes. It went out again. Uh, of of the mall that I I spent many many formative years at this mall. Um, let's fucking stay on. Stay, 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 stay on. Because when it turns off, like let's see here. Um, yeah, see. This it, it sucks. Like there's no green screen action here. It's like I'm, it's almost like blah, into like the Stranger Things like like upside down world is like starting to creep in over here. Now it's like bam, just fixed it. Um, anyway, <laughs> touch touch the stairs. <laughs> I can't. The stairs are behind me. I'm I'm I am coming to you live from the information booth that I used to work at, at this mall. Um, sure, <laughs> look at this photograph. I used to work here. Oh my God, Admiral Luck, did you really just drop a, um, you did, you did, you dropped a, uh, you dropped a Nickelback uh, reference on me. I'm, I'm okay, I'm here for it. Um, oh boy, all right. So, microphone's good. Ring light is on. My mouse is not working. Is it still? Yeah. For whatever reason, my Bluetooth has just been like wonky as fuck. I didn't know it was a Bluetooth, so I thought it was my mouse. I went out and I spent... Oh, and this went out. Seriously, you guys. I'm like so freaking over this. Somebody, somebody tell Oprah I need a laptop. I need a new computer. I need, I need everything. Um, none of this shit is going to happen. <laughs> but, all right, where are we scrolling? Uh, maybe ask the new eight ball for help. Uh, okay, so how do I do this, actually? Let me, let, let me do this. I, I type in eight ball, and then I ask a question. Um, 
Uh, will my computer shit ever work? Uh, uh, okay, let's see here. Does it work? The eight ball says the answer is no. I didn't make the rules. Oh, man. All right, I knew it. <laughs> it's like today is, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's apropos. Maybe it's um, because, like I said, um, this mall behind me, Randall Park Mall, it no longer exists. Um, I'm going to actually, do I have it here? I think I do. Hold on, you guys. Um, because there is, shit, where the hell is it? Um, oh, man. It's, uh, oh, I know where it is. Hold on. Um, nope, not there. Oh, here it is. Okay. So. Ah! This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. I need to just chill the fuck out, don't I? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, the mall got demoed. Actually, the apartment behind this mall is pretty nice. Okay, so welcome to the weekly meeting. I am your hostess, Adriana A. And who need to calm down. This is our just chatting show um which i'm feeling a little uh a little discombobulated because um i wasn't ready for dj fox's sit and spin class to be over with so soon um i mean it actually was right on time i was the one kind of running late and part of the reason i was running late is because it was just like one little tech hurdle after another after another after I thought everything was all set up. Like, I haven't really touched anything on my computer. Why, when I launched OBS, is it just spitting beach ball for no good reason? It worked fine last week. Uh, why is my ring light just keep going out? It was fine last week. Um, why was my microphone too loud? It was fine last week. Oh, actually, it's probably because I bumped it. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, but... So it's, oh my God, I am so looking forward to when this show is over and then it's going to be DJ Airson doing happy hour and then I'm going to have three hours to troubleshoot the shit out of this shit. And we are this close to starting like a, uh, I mean, I don't want to do this, but um, starting like a, um, a Twitch um, subscriber or tip goal of like buy Adriana A a um, everything, but but that's stupid though because I'm moving to Berlin in a month and Jupiter Gatling's got a fine computer, so actually don't do that. Like tip the DJ, save your money, please tip your DJs, tip the channel if you want. Your subs are great. That's like I'm so appreciative. Fine, fine. Can I rent something? I mean, renting a ring light seems kind of stupid because you can buy these things for like 20 bucks. Um, renting a computer. I mean, I don't know. Uh, actually, to be honest, my laptop has been kind of rocking it lately. Um, I might just transfer everything and just like do all my future live streams from my laptop. Maybe ditch the green screen for a while. And like as long as I have... Um, this, you know, cute apartment, then, you know, do DJ sets from that. Although like today, today is mall rats. Like I needed to be at the mall. I've got mall footage, you know? So, all right. So here you guys go. This is, this is the mall uh, I worked at uh, when I was, um, I actually held down. Oh my God. How many jobs did I have here? I think I had, I had four. I had four different jobs. Oh, you're driving me crazy. Okay, we're just gonna ignore the ring light. Okay, no, we're gonna try it one more time. 
one more time. Like, why don't you work? Like, part of me is like, do I just, like, oh, like, can I, no, oh, nope, nope, now you don't work at all. Great. Great. I broke it. I broke it. Uh, <laughs> Team Mac. PC. I mean, honestly, I think I figured out my future, um, my future setup, which will be a while, but, um, like I have a MacBook Pro laptop. I have an iMac and I'm realizing, uh, you know, there's so much like back and forth with the two computers. It's like, why don't I just have everything on a, on a great iMac? But what I am thinking is, um, assuming live streaming is still definitely going to be a thing in a year or two is, um, have a lot, have a streaming computer. I think I might like, if I'm going to like, just have a computer for, for live streaming, maybe just like do a PC for live streaming and then use the Mac for everything else. I don't know. Uh, did she break it? Yes. But at what cost? Apparently 20 bucks. No, I think it's going to come back on. This thing has been like super wonka doodle. Is this the most scattered, scattered weekly meeting you guys have had in a while? It, it kind of is, isn't it? Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so, so yeah, this mall right here. Uh, our theme for today is mall rats. And this is a total dance commander disco theme. Like uh, every, every month, uh, like right before the end of the month, I check in with my team, my team being all of the resident DJs, even some of the guest DJs, um, and uh, and the dance commander herself, Ramy. And I'm like, hey, let's, uh, like, what, what themes do you guys want to do? And uh, everyone kind of chips in with some ideas, and, you know, it's a little back and forth on our Facebook thread. And for whatever reason, um, Ramy was like, mall rats. And I was like, oh, I, actually, I, I I, I kind of have a vision for this. Let, let's do it. So I um, submitted it to uh, in our thread, and I'm like, okay, uh, February or I'm sorry, January 29th will be Mall Rats, and like most of my team was like, what the fuck is that theme? Like, what's that? But PDS Mix and myself were like, oh, we got this. We got this. Oh, and, I, and I'm going to assume that DJ Airson for her happy hour is probably going to have like some mall themed type stuff too. So, um, so yeah, I was very much, uh, I, you know, I, I spent my, my misspent youth was spent very much in, in malls. Um, not just this one, although this particular mall I spent most of my time in. Um, I, like I said, I worked in four different places. Um, I worked at the information desk. I worked at the artworks where I was both a framer. I framed all that cheesy eighties artwork, like, um, like the hot naked girl, on the red Lamborghini and um, and lots of Nagel prints of which I, I actually ended up like liberating a few of those Nagel prints. Patrick Nagel, if uh, anyone's familiar with Patrick Nagel. Uh, so anyway, at the artworks, I was b both worked on the sales floor, but then also they kind of like just shoved me in the back and I, I framed stuff. I um, learned how to framing. Um, and, uh, and if you screwed up, like if you like somehow fucked up, um, like a slice or, you know, you, as you're sliding the glass and you sort of like scraped the print, um, they would often just be like, oh, well, it's useless now. We're going to throw it out, you know, um, of which I'd be like, or I could just take it home. And that's how I ended up with not one, not two, but three. Patrick Nagel prints, um, none of which I have anymore. I think I kind of went through this phase where I was like, oh, this is sort of cheesy. Like, I love it, but I'm not going to have it hanging on my wall. And now it's like super retro. Like, I love the Nagel look. I know Raimi from Dance Commander Disco also definitely shares my love uh, of, of Patrick Nagel. So, um, Anyway, so I worked at the Artworks. I worked at Merry Go Round, which was a clothing store. I worked at um, the Soundworks, I think it was called, or the Sound Factory, 
or it was like basically one of those places that had recording booths set up and you could go in and they had like a ton of karaoke tracks and they had a recording booth and I worked um, actually as an engineer um, doing, you know, basically recording people do karaoke and then they would get like a cassette tape. Um, but the job that I had the longest and the one that I enjoyed the most was uh, the information booth. Um, I now this is um, this is sort of like uh, this is a this is a, a weird yet sad yet interesting story. I don't know. Okay. Mm. So the information booth. Uh, I don't know. Just I don't know. How do you find a job as a teenager? Um, I saw an ad information booth looking for. I mean, I think it even said, um, a, 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 did they say they were looking for women or girls? I don't know. Actually, I don't think they did at all. Um, I think they just said information booth, you know, position available. So I applied and I got the job. Now, at the time, there was a manager and an assistant manager and the manager was this um, super cool, I'm pretty sure, like, now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I think he was gay. Um, but, you know, but back then I wasn't so sure. Uh, like, it didn't really cross my radar. But um, uh, my my gaydar was not as finely tuned at as, as it is, as it became, like, several years later. But um, so uh, I get hired. I get the job. And um, the manager always loved me. He was great. And and then the assistant manager, she was always sort of like a little standoffish. And I then later came to find out that, um, so back then, I'm, I'm AMAB, everybody, assigned male at birth. So uh, back then I was still presenting. Oh, I was presenting... Faggy teenager, <laughs> faggy male teenager, I think. Faggy, geeky male teenager. Uh, even though I only dated girls at the time, but, um, but you know, I definitely had a unique style that definitely coded me queer. Um, even before I was really aware and out about my queerness. And I think, of course, it being Ohio, especially suburban Cleveland, Ohio, uh, trans isn't even on the radar. I mean, nowadays, I think, you know, people definitely read this stuff better. But, you know, back then, it's like, oh, if you're effeminate, then, you know, they're not even thinking that you're trans. They're just thinking that you're gay. So I think the manager thought I was gay, um, even though I wasn't. Um, proud bisexual people. Um, but even then, I, you know, I was like, you know, that fixation with Duran Duran, like more than just like, I really like these guys, but also sort of like, I do find them attractive as well. Should have been a clue, but you know, it's all just sort of bubbling there under the surface, but whatever. Anyway, um, God, growing up queer in Ohio, so much of it is like, you know, subconsciously buried simply for survival techniques. I mean, you know, we're talking like the eighties and nineties here, right? So anyway, um, so I got hired for the information booth at at, um, at Randall Park Mall. And unbeknownst to me, but I found out later, I was the first guy that they had ever uh, hired. It was always, 100%, always, uh, they always, they only hired women for the information booth. Uh, more specifically, really, you know, teenage girls. Um, you know, it was like high school job. Uh, and that... You know, it's like total, total Stranger Things season three at the Starcourt Mall. You know, it's like that, that kind of thing. It's like the teenagers worked in all these shops. This is where we got jobs. Um, so, yeah, I was, uh, I, I was, I was the first, um, the first at, at that time, they thought, uh, first guy uh, who to ever work at the information desk. And in, that was like a little feather in, in the manager's hat. He was like, oh, diversity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you know? But, um, but the, the female assistant manager um, very much, uh, I, I could tell, did not like that. She did not. It was like, 
I don't know why, um, you know, and uh, eventually, like after having this job for almost a year, he he moved away to a different mall and she became the manager. And within like a month of her becoming manager, I was fired because I was, you know, caught doing my homework at the mall. Like everybody did their homework at the mall. It's uh, like, like at the information desk. Mo the information desk is mostly just sitting around. You're just sitting around. Occasionally you answer the, a phone. Um, there's always two people in the information booth. And like on a slow night, like a Monday night when hardly anyone's in the mall, there aren't that many people coming up and bugging you. And then if they come up, you just put your homework down, you answer their damn question. Um, so everybody did this. But yet I was the one fired because, oh, you're not allowed to do your homework at the mall. I'm like, well, everyone else does. What the, like, you know, you were warned. Oh, come on. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I know, if only they knew now. It was like, ha, I wasn't a guy all this time. See, fooled you. All this time you thought I was a guy. You were wrong. I didn't even know I, I, I was wrong about that. So anyway, so see, you, you, hired, you hired a woman anyway. But they, they wanted a teenage girl anyway. But working at the information desk at the mall, of course I knew all the mall gossip and i knew that the manager at the artworks had just gotten fired uh apparently for sexual harassment um and uh he was he was he was kind of a cool dude it was like one of those only one of the um yeah it was like it just super you know like art total 80s art fag right um but yeah i don't i don't know exactly the details and it might have been it might not have been sexual harassment at all. It might have purely been homophobia. Who knows? It was the 80s. Um, but anyway, I knew there was a job opening there. So I went to the artworks and I got a job. So, um, oh, Admiral Luck looks like an RPM. Oh, yeah, Randall Park Mall is an Amazon distribution center. Yeah, so, um, so this mall apparently kind of fell on hard times. Towards the late 80s and 90s, um, I guess it became... A little bit of a, uh, I guess there were some like, you know, some some gang shit there or something, and I don't know. Just, I mean, this is the story of malls all across the United States where malls are shutting down. Like there are a third, like it's like twenty five to thirty five percent um, of the, of the malls in the United States have closed. Um, in the past, like, you know, 15 years um, from what it was like in the heyday of the 80s and 90s, which are kind of seen as the golden years. And so I think a lot of what Mall Rats, the theme is going to be about is like a little bit of like this retro 80s, 90s vibe. So I think that's what we're that's what we're kind of getting at. So this right here is a book that I bought, Abandoned America, Dismantling the Dream. And um God, what is up with this green, green screen? So as you can see on the back cover, does that look familiar? That is that is Randall Park Mall. That's, uh, oh my God, with a little Christmas tree. Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Well, anyway, this, this is what became of my mall. So I am utterly and totally fascinated with the concept of utopia. And um, I've talked about this here and there on this channel. Um, I love the idea of like trying to create this in synthetic environment that aspires to a certain level of perfection. Um, this is why I love Burning Man. Uh, why you know we're we're out there every year as burners trying to create this sort of like you know for one week this perfect city that's really artistic and creative and and you know there's no money and it's it's almost like this little experiment in utopia but the thing is is utopia is a concept utopia can't really ever exist perfection never really exists so um, so yeah, this whole like kind of like synthetic environment. Uh, there's a there's a place outside of Berlin called Tropical Islands, which is like this huge Zeppelin hangar 
Uh, it was built for a concept uh, Zeppelin company that was going to build the largest Zeppelins in the world. And then basically it was kind of like a startup that went under. They got as far as building the hangar. They converted the hangar into basically a biodome, like a big biosphere, a mini biosphere dome. And there's like this whole, like it's, it's like the perfect idealized version of tropical islands. They've built like a little mini rainforest and beaches and a lagoon, you know, but then, you know, there's always something like a little off about it. You know, like th this is the stuff of, you know, science fiction. I love, I love shit like this. It's like Westworld is, you know, kind of all about that and, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, uh, what, what is that Unix junkie like the word nowhere, nowhere now here at the same utopia? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jupiter Gatling. No, Tropical Islands is perfect. <laughs> it's like the Truman Show. Again, kind of like this concept of like these, these perfect, I mean, WandaVision, if anyone's watching WandaVision right now is sort of, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm loving this show. And again, it's these, this concept of, you know, like creating this perfect environment, but then it's not really perfect. So um, shopping malls are very much like that, um, especially, you know, like, you know, it's that it's that suburban, you know, dream of, you know, climate control and everything's perfect. And it's just like a nice place to go. And then and then it turns into this. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I bought this book because, um, this photographer, Matthew Christopher, um, like, uh, went, went to several abandoned places. Now there's, um, you know, I, I live in Berlin part time. I'm about to live there full time. And there's so many abandoned places in Berlin and Berlin, you kind of think of as like being a hotbed of abandoned spaces. Um, because of, you know, World War One, World War Two, um, you know, things that were built that then fall, fall apart, the fall of the wall, East Germany, people, everyone like, you know, there was like a bit of a mass exodus, artists take over places, stuff falls apart. I mean, abandoned spaces are very much a thing in Berlin. You don't necessarily think of that in America. Like in America, if something fails, they tear it down. You know, it doesn't just stay abandoned for too long. And in fact, Randall Park Mall became abandoned and it was abandoned for like, I think about 10 years before it finally came down. And yes, now it is a, um, it is a Amazon distribution center. Yep. So, um, but before it got torn down, um, uh, this, this, uh, this photographer, Matthew Christopher uh, took photos, um, went there. There's all sorts of fascinating things in here, but because this is l literally the mall that I like spent so, so much time in, I actually even wrote a screenplay kind of like based on this mall. Um, I mean, this is, you know, that, that's what it looked like. It was like, you know, the, the utopian dream you know shopping shopping dream i mean so yeah he's it's i mean it's really fascinating because this looks i mean it's not that much falling apart it really kind of looks like you just go in there and you know clean it up a little bit but um but yeah the, the, when it was built it was the largest shopping mall in the world i mean it soon got surpassed by i believe west edmonton mall and then uh, Mall of America. I'm not actually. I'm not sure which one's bigger, but um, but yeah, it's like it was. You know, I, you know, I saw Star Wars at this mall. I saw Blade Runner at this mall. In like here, hold on, wait, where is it? It's actually actually I don't think it's this movie theater, because this movie theater uh, got added after I had already moved away. But you know, um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Randall Park Mall. Um, there was some somewhere I was going with this low budget Logan's Run. Yeah, it's totally. It was. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna check ch check in on the chat here. 
Um, Celador Mythica, yes. Uh, the architect who did create malls was a socialist, and he rallied against the capitalist mall influences. Yeah, yeah. The, I, um, as I was doing a little bit of research uh, for, uh, for tonight's, um, I, and digging around, looking up videos, uh, I, I, for, I forget the architect's name, but, um, but yeah, what he's now most known for, and he, you know... <laughs> died kind of regretting that that's uh sort of like that's his legacy with shopping malls was sort of like creating for all of these brand new we're talking post world war ii 1950s suburban dream and all these subdivisions start getting built and these are like pretty much brand new towns that are like just springing up so they don't have a traditional downtown so his idea was to kind of create again this this utopian vision of like let me create sort of like a downtown like social gathering space with you know fountains and trees and it can be indoors because you know some of these a lot of these places are like um well the first you know the first shopping mall was built in minnesota uh, in 1956 and um you know he designed it all indoors because in minnesota it's freakishly cold six months out of the year so um you know you, 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 it makes sense for it to be everything to be indoors um and then you know it was such a popular concept that shopping malls just sprung up all over the united states and of course it's interesting shopping malls are totally dying here in america but meanwhile in asia oh my god it's like shopping malls are crazy supersized and and it's yeah it's nuts um I, like <laughs> you know it takes like a mall of america which is also in minnesota it's the largest shopping mall in the united states has like a you know amusement park inside of it and all sorts of stuff um yeah like asian malls like take that in you know it's it's like the super duper mega mall so anyway um so yes tonight we are doing we are doing mall rats um so i'm not sure what the dance commander disco has in store actually for mall rats um i'm very very curious but I, i'm sure that um pds mix and myself and dj airson will probably be leaning into you know the golden era of um of of malls which is really the 80s and 90s um there's so many 80s movies take place in malls 90s movies as well i mean we're talking like what uh uh was it was it day wait what day of the dead wait which which zombie movie takes place in the shopping mall um there's uh let's see um you know it's like all those 80s teen movies um yeah believe it or not i don't even think that i have um i think i'm alone now in i i, I might have to dig up a uh a remix, a bootleg remix of that. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna go mall goth a little bit with some hot topic, um, for sure. Dawn of the Dead. Thank you, Sin Rose. Yes. Um, oh, a mall cop, a mall goth. Oh my god, this is gonna be great. I'm super looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. Like every now and then, we just you know come up with. I mean, that's the thing that we do on this channel. Um, I mean, obviously. We play mashups. That's like the crux of it all. Every song you hear is going to be mashed up. It's going to be, you know, remixed, manipulated in some way. Um, but uh, but I also love the fact that we can adapt this very, very limiting yet broad musical concept to any theme we want. Um, and so like when Dance Commander Disco is like, hey, we want to do mall rats. Or I'm going to be like, okay, let's do it. You know, <laughs> love it. Um, uh, of course, what I'm really going to be doing instead of prepping for the show is trying to get all my tech together and all that. But, uh, and, and ask me, ask me how the packing's going. Come on. <laughs> Actually, let's ask the eight ball. Let's ask the magic eight ball how, you know, because the, the only reason. I left Berlin to come back to San Francisco is to pack up all my shit. So, uh, how is the packing going? Magic eight ball. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what it says. Eight ball says you'll find the answer in the dance commander disco. 
Something tells me that I won't. <laughs> but, and um, is the, oh, the, and the eight ball also speaks German. I love that oct ball. Voice de mall. Where is the mall? Um, oh, it's in the time hole. Yeah, I think th this mall is definitely right now in the time hole. Th th this mall only exists in our in our in our memories and dreams. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Jupiter Gatling for uh, for programming the uh, the Magic Eight Ball. That was um, something that that um, uh, Fox Sounds has on his own channel. And then when he started doing the sit and spin here on the Booty Mashup channel, he was like, "Can we get a Magic Eight Ball? It's one of our favorite things on my own channel." I'm like, "Oh yeah, we got you." So I love like you know, it's like we're. <laughs> mixing and matching and you know like what we've you know lobster dust does something and then we're like oh we we want that too still waiting on that track id which apparently is probably a little bit easier for him to do on his own channel when it's just one dj when it's like a bunch of us all djing on the same channel we all have to have a you know a, it's like the way he's got his his track id set up it's a little uh, it's a little easier to do if you're the only live streamer on that channel, unlike <laughs> unlike this. Yeah, DJ Time. That track ID thing is intense. It it is. It's like uh, it, it like goes to the cloud. The Serato DJ thing goes to the cloud, and then a PC reads the cloud thing, and then there's like a custom bit of text code that sends it to the OBS, and it's just like, yeah, I don't, I. Yeah, dumb it down and make it so multiple DJs all streaming to the same channel can do it. But apparently we, we, we apparently we do it hard. Uh, we, we, it's, it's difficult. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> we, we, we try, we try. Um, yeah. The other thing I've, I've like got to do, oh, you guys. So did anyone catch the um, PDS Mixes Masters of MASH on Wednesday. Um, he had Amorphous on. Amorphous, for those who don't know, is a, a mashup producer. Um, he's a young mashup producer, 23 years old. He's been, he's been making mashups for years, though, um, and has been blowing up, like, steadily, steadily, kind of, like, building his shit. And then really in the past, like, few months has just, like, exploded. Um, a couple of his um, things went viral. One in particular went, like, for real, legit, like, crazy viral. Um, where celebrities were all... It was like a celebrity pile-on of everyone. Um, like, and that's... I, I think that's sort of, like, when I see certain um, certain people or certain things go viral... Oftentimes, it like and a celebrity will attach themselves to it and be like, or you know, big up it, and then it seems like suddenly it's like, like, do all celebrities like follow each other? And then if one celebrity is like, hey, this thing's cool, everyone else sort of needs to jump on to not be late to the party and be like, oh yeah, yeah, this thing, this. So I mean, that's that's pretty much what happened to Amorphous, where um like. Uh, you know, Oprah. No, I, actually, I think it was Beyonce. Really, uh, was might have been the first one, or it might have been Rihanna. I forget who, but like, you know, an artist that he mashed up um, took notice and you know, kind of tweeted about it, and then someone else tweeted, and then and then oh, and then when Oprah, when Oprah gets involved, then you know, and then everyone's jumping on board, and so so this kid's had like a a crazy trajectory um that was like you know steadily building steadily building and then all of a sudden blam um so uh shockingly pds mix was able to get him uh for an interview for masters of mash uh which i think is great because um for those of you who are not familiar with the show uh pds mix who is going to be djing here uh right after me a little later um he's the last dj set for tonight um, he does a show every Wednesday. It's kind of like a, um, it happens right before the the mashup listening party uh, that I normally do on Wednesdays. He does it on his own channel, PDS Mix. Give him a follow. 
um, where he interviews a master of mash, uh, someone who um, you know uh, has you know instrumental uh, to the mashup community, has been making mashups for years, or it, you know is somehow uh, you know basically you know an esteemed producer, whatever. And oftentimes, I like I used to tease him. Um, and be like, oh, it's two old white guys talking <laughs> this is like what his show is because the early days of mashup culture, like the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, a bunch of UK artists. It was, you know, a bunch of white guys. Um, and now it's 20 years later. And so now it's a bunch of old white guys. <laughs> Oh, like I, you know, I, I, I joke. It's like, but that's kind of like that was who was getting on the show. And lately, it's he's been getting some of the more younger producers, um, or even not so young, but producers who've kind of come up more recently. Um, and w I was very, very pleased that he got Amorphous, who is young, person of color, and uh, is really kind of like just blown up recently. He isn't really from twenty, you know, the scene from. 15, 20 years ago, but it is from right now. So it was a pretty fascinating, uh, me as someone who's been involved with mashup culture for nearly 20 years now and, and is, knows the whole history, I was utterly fascinated by someone who is really kind of coming coming into his own just in the past couple years and doesn't necessarily have the whole history of, of mashups and like where, like where does he post stuff? Like where... Like all of these um, avenues that we used to use back in the day don't really exist anymore. What does someone who's kind of like blowing up in the mashup scene now, what are they doing? And it's all, it's all Twitter and YouTube, as you would expect. And so in hearing his story and also what was really great, which I cannot say this for like a lot of the interviews that, um, that are on Masters of MASH um, by much older people, um, we're not anywhere near as eloquent um, and well-spoken as Amorphous. I was like just really impressed uh, at what a great interview he is. Uh, so, you know, there's a reason why he's blowing up. But hearing how, like, how he kind of like, you know, built his brand, I mean, and there's, there's, you know, definitely a certain amount of innate talent and hustle that that he had to do but then there and he's very well aware of it and i thought that that was great that he recognized it a certain amount of luck as well of like who who attached themselves to him and kind of big upped him and um and it's uh so and it got me thinking it's like why can't we get that why can't booty mashup have that kind of break we've been like busting our butts collectively and not just collectively but also just me i've been busting my butt for you know 17 and a half years to kind of like uh, it's like let's like can we can we be a thing can we can we be a thing that kind of like blows up and goes viral and um and you know like we're suddenly everyone's like oh my god have you been to this channel have you been to their website have you have you heard the stuff that they're constantly like have you heard this mixtape i mean it's like can just one mixtape go viral can just one booty mashup top 10 go viral like how do we make this happen it's like i kind of feel like i mean on the one hand maybe we're doing just fine maybe nothing ever ever needs to go viral and ever blow up big maybe like just slow and steady slow and steady we're doing we're doing fine you know um but when you see you know other people in your scene kind of have like a moment like amorphous is having you know you can't help you know just sort of think i was like fuck we've been working on this for 17 years like when is when is that gonna happen you know and yeah, we got, we, we got, we did get Matthew Mercer and Marisha Ray definitely big enough up in us. That's definitely a step in the right direction, but it's not the same as Beyonce, Rihanna, and Oprah. <laughs> I mean, um, but maybe that's also like, maybe we're just not, I mean, 
Beyonce, Rihanna, and Oprah, let's face it, are all fairly mainstream. And I wonder if maybe we lean into like sort of like the kooky, geeky um, weirdness factor of mashup culture. I mean, certainly Amorphous makes super smooth, really, you know, he makes great mashups, but it's all fairly, um, you know, stuff that stuff that obviously works, but it's not like the OMG WTF mashups. It's not like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody thought of that. It's more like, oh, hey, yeah, that works. That's That's got a good groove, you know? Smooth with a V, as Fox Sounds likes to do. And uh, and so then I'm kind of wondering, it's like, oh, God, are we just – I mean, not that we're going to, like, start selling out and, it, like, we're not going to – okay, oh, you know, like, Adriana sends out the email to the team and is like, hey, guys, can we maybe stop playing, like, the weird mashups? Like, no more anime mashups, no more geeky mashups. And it's like we got to, like, you know – we need Oprah to tweet about us. So that's what we're looking for. Um, <laughs> Jupiter Gatling's like, flips the table. <laughs> no, I mean, I would never do that. I mean, um, part of what makes Booty mash up who and what we are is that we are all over the map. I mean, certainly, um, I mean, the kind of mashups that Amorphous does are actually quite similar to a lot of the mashup production of Fox Sounds, um, kind of leaning into, you know, uh, R&B and hip hop and, um, uh, you know, just smooth with a V. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, to thine own self be true. I know, I know. Uh, and um, uh, Quinaria, uh uploading stuff to TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is, I mean, that's the other thing too. It's like, okay, so um, Amorphous is, uh, you know, talking about, you know, it's Twitter and YouTube, but then also TikTok is really where stuff is really starting to pick up for him as well. And that definitely helped, you know, you know, helped elevate it. And I mean, that's like just the music industry in general. I mean, you look at so many artists uh, new artists that are like blowing up. It's like, oh, this this artist, that artist, you know, that suddenly has a big hit. And I was like, how have I not heard this on the radio? It's like, oh, it was a TikTok hit, you know, um, or it started off as a TikTok hit. I'm um, like the number one single, uh, uh, the number one U.S. single of 2020 was The Weeknd, Blinding Lights. And I love that. I love that song. I especially love the instrumentation, it's super synthwave inspired. Um, it's, it's a, by all measures, a great song. Um, I did not know that the original marketing push for that song was a TikTok dance. Was, you know, hey everybody, let's, you know, we're gonna do a dance and then everyone's gonna copy it and because that's TikTok culture is everyone just doing the same thing why have a fucking original idea of your own and do your own thing when you can just like oh we're gonna copy this thing because everyone else is doing it and then and then and, you know and it's all like just everyone jumping on each other's bandwagon in an effort to big up you know like make themselves go viral and maybe theirs will be the one that really takes it over the edge i mean uh, you know, so, um, <laughs> I, yeah, we're going to be on tick. We're going to get on TikTok. I mean, you know, DJ time and, uh, myself and Jupiter talk about things here and there. And it's like, like, yeah, we need to get on TikTok. I, I especially need to get on TikTok and I do, I do enjoy TikTok. Like I, um, you know, uh, Quinaria, I do the same thing. I'll, I'll sometimes like at night, it's like, eh, let's just go see what's going on on TikTok. Scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> you know, but I've had a hard time trying to figure out like, okay, well, how do I, like, Twitch is easy. We're doing DJ sets and shows. We, you know, we have a history of doing live performances and doing live DJ sets. Twitch was an easy one. It's like, hey, we're doing this live we adapted really quickly because it's 
you know, it's different from DJing live in a club, and certainly there's a lot more chit chatty. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be weird when we go back to a to a club environment, and it's gonna be like, what do you mean I can't like talk in between every song or talk over the song or or laugh at things that you know people type at me, <laughs> you know, and interact? It's gonna be a totally different weird vibe, but um, but still, th that that's um, you there's a there's a more solidly uh there's a more solid through line to you know live djing to you know live streaming than there is like making a tiktok video you know uh which is like okay you know i could yeah it, you know it's got to be like a funny little dance or a skit or a thing and and also like the mash like how do we get the music on there it's like there are mashups on there but like two years ago when we first started looking at tiktok like lobster dust was like you guys we need to get on tiktok um uh <laughs> how was that for my lobster dust imitation and uh and and we all like you know it's like i have a booty mashup account reserved i have an adriana booty account on on there there's like almost nothing there but it's like how do we i mean it's like there's not even mash like uh, how do we do a thing to mashups when mashups aren't even there it's like it's not like, so I have not cracked that quite yet. Um, and it might simply be like, all right, I'm just going to play this in the background and whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I mean, I'm over 30 and I understand how TikTok became popular. It's, um, it's, I mean, they're like cute little one minute videos. I mean, if you were a fan of Vine, a fan of Vine, TikTok makes, like total sense. I, I mean, Yaganub, I'm 852 years old. Everybody knows this. I was born in the Middle Ages. Jeez, <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> we've been over this. So, um, but 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 I will. But you know, yes, I'm not over 30. Let's just go with it. As I make all these references to 80s and 90s culture at this mall right behind me. Um, but yeah, TikTok. I, I mean, when Vine disappeared there were a bunch of like kind of like vine wannabes and so yeah exactly uh, it, it's you know the the there was going to be something like that that kind of rose to the occasion um and instagram wasn't really cutting it uh so yeah it's interesting um uh well so that's that is definitely a booty mashup project for 2021 is to shore up our TikTok and kind of like figure out what to do with it. But first I need to pack. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, you know, I don't need to ask the magic eight ball how much packing I've done. I've barely packed anything. I've taken care of so much shit while I've been back here in San Francisco. Um, my RV is all fixed up and, you know, kind of like in hibernation. My loft in LA is all fixed up. And I mean, except for the washing machine, which has been an issue. Don't, I don't believe in home warranty companies anymore. Like any excuse for them not to do what you actually pay them to do isn't worth the money you save. Just, oh, the washing machine's broken? Fine, let me pay to fix it. As opposed to let me wait nine months to then, with back and forth, back and forth, ugh, adulting. Ugh, ugh, I don't wanna adult. But anyway, shit's getting taken care of. My place in LA, I'm packing up stuff here in SF. It's like taking care of stuff, taking care of things. Um, so yeah, I'm. But I haven't actually packed anything yet. I've just been taking care of shit. So <laughs> anyway, you guys, let's go to the mall. Let me um, let me do something that I sometimes forget to do. And uh, thanks for just hanging out with me. It's uh, th this this show is so stupid. This show is just like it's literally me just chatting. It's I mean it, the category is just chatting. It still shocks me that anyone would tune in to just listen to me like, you know, chat about shit for apparently an hour, <laughs> you know, and I half the time never even know where, where I'm going to go with this stuff. So anyway, mall rats. Okay. Let's change the go live notification. Uh, mall rats. Happy hour with DJ Airson coming up. 
And um, thanks everyone again for joining us here on the Booty Mashup Twitch channel. Um, we are celebrating. Um, we're celebrating going to the mall and and all that that entails. So uh, I'm gonna sign off here. Wait, where's my phone? Um, Yaganub, I love this app and it frustrates the hell out of me. And now, and now my screen's completely dim. Like, what is why? What, why is nothing working? It's, I'm, yo, know, now it pop, and now suddenly it gets bright again. Crazy. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh yes, and Erson confirms, in fact, she is participating in the Mall Rats theme. So, everyone, welcome to your Friday afternoon, slash, Friday evening, slash, Friday night. Let's go to the mall. Thanks for being here and hit refresh for DJ Erson at the mall for happy hour. Did it stop? Why is it? I know I'm still here. What the hell? <laughs> ah, my computer. Like I hit stop streaming and it's just a spinning beach ball. No, you're stuck with me. It's like, we're, 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 we're stuck. <laughs> Magic eight ball. Oh my God. My computer. Oprah. I need a new computer. Oprah. If you're, if you're out there, <laughs> it worked for Amorphous. He tweeted he needed a new laptop and Oprah bought him one. Um, wow. AI is in control of booty now. It's true. Oh my God. It is literally a spinning beach ball. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to have to force quit this shit. Um, anyway, seriously, you guys, thanks for, thanks for putting up with me. Um, I'm going to go scream into the void now and then I'll be back and I'll see you guys in three hours when hopefully everything is working perfectly because it's going to be a utopian experience at the mall. Okay. Force quit. Oh yeah, OBS not responding. All right, cheers you guys.